Okay. Anybody have any immediate questions? Just uh, created by that. I'm going to go through how the systems work and everything, so we'll answer, I think, most of the immediate stuff. Anything pressing? How often do you have to change the filters? It really is a factor where you live, obviously, with dust and so forth, but uh, we normally about every six months, you know, and if it's a construction area or a lot of traffic, that type of thing, it can be three to six months. I think that's that's yeah. And about every year, you know, approximately every year, pull your core out and wash it. Now that's only for, and we'll get into that too, that's for the heat recovery ventilators with a basically plastic core. Energy recovery ventilators at this time are a material that's similar to paper, and you can't just wash them, but you can vacuum them and take the dust off them and so forth, which you can You'd do. have to get the filters that went with the... Yeah, yeah. The yeah. yeah, they slide right in. No, they're not. Is there a central system that has to be run all the time, and can you isolate the rooms? It's for a whole house ventilation system, and that's the whole concept, is to really, and we'll, we'll talk about the details of that and how it all, the whole scheme of how it works. So yeah, it's really meant to be a whole house solution. Any additional information on the conducting? So you're talking about a series of plastic tubes? Yeah, I have so, some samples here I can show you now, yeah. Okay, do you want to do you want to highlight the that plastic or anything more than the difference between that versus a wire duct or you know aluminum and it comes in big rolls and you cut it off. I'm just yeah, I'll I, I'll, 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 I'll talk about the details of that. I, yeah, that's part of the whole comfort system thing. So we'll get into that. Yeah, just a little bit. This is a uh, little history of ventilation. And uh, U.S. homes are just a little less sufficient than this, but uh, <laughs> with, the, with the, the ground tube, you can see in the summer it cools and dehumidifies, and in the winter it heats and humidifies that air before it comes in, whereas our houses, we just let it all in directly. So just a little uh, bit on that. So ventilation has come a long ways. But it's really a critical aspect of, of things. And the whole concept of a comfo home and the comfo systems is you can close the house up. We're here because of things like passive house, high energy efficient homes. You're using triple glazed windows. You are utilizing the entire structure for heating, cooling, and so forth, or preventing heating in the summertime. You can leave the windows closed in an urban environment it's quiet, and yet your house has more fresh air than you would have with the windows open because you bring it in, you're filtering it, and then you're distributing fresh air through the whole house. It's an absolutely wonderful thing to experience. The other obvious one is by ventilating properly, you eliminate the problems of mold and mildew, and with that, indoor air quality is enhanced tremendously. And that is a big issue in everywhere we, everywhere I go, it's uh, in the summer in some places, in the winter in others. We were over in uh, Berkeley last night and one of the gentlemen there said, our big problem is the winter because we have moisture problems. And an HRV, and we'll get into the details of heat recovery as opposed to energy recovery ventilation. But uh, he was saying his problem is moisture in the winter time, whereas a lot of places it's moisture in the summer when it's hot and humid. The other thing, as we showed, is the filters. They're externally on the unit, very easy to change. This is actually a uh, previous unit. The new ones have a, an even nicer system on, on that where the filters can just slide out and get rid of the old ones and the new ones slide right in. Filters are disposable, they're not cleanable? Yes. Just a little uh, note. The McGraw Hill Construction did a uh, survey a couple of years, a year and a half ago. Energy efficiency and indoor air quality were at the very top of what consumers are looking at as far as energy efficient homes and building their homes. So this ties right into what your customers and what the homeowners are looking for. 
as far as builders go, high efficiency HVAC equipment was at the top of their list. Just a little bit of the history of the whole idea of comfort and, and energy efficiency. Decentralized stoves, central heating, thermal insulation, these are things that led to, uh, initially, you started putting heating systems into houses and they leaked like crazy, so the energy just went up, up, and up. And right about nine, 1970, gee, what happened then? <laughs> People started saying, okay, well, let's insulate the house and let's do solar and geothermal and heat pumps and other energy efficient ways to do the heating and the cooling. And then you get into things, heat recovery, ventilation, more insulation efficiency and air tightness, all led to this curve continuing to go down. Costs were going up continuously and are now starting to level off. And I think you're finding that you can start to build really well done houses. The money you're saving on uh, having to put in big furnaces and everything else can go toward insulation and it can help to balance that out. I won't, I won't stand here and say it's no more money to build a, a passive house than it is, because we all know better. But it's not as big as it could be because we are reducing the HVAC load and with boilers and, and all the rest of it. And comfort continues to go all the way up. And we see the uh, smart grid and other technologies will probably improve that a little further. This gives you an idea of what's happening with uh, around the world and the whole idea of efficiency of buildings. And uh, does anybody know who, where the guy that made this is from? <laughs> probably from Switzerland. <laughs> Basically, this box there, this ring is, is Switzerland, Austria, and Germany right now are really at the top with, with these programs. Passive House is Germany, Minergy is Swiss, and Climate House, I'm not that familiar with it. I think that's in Austria, but, but Passive House is pretty much dominating Austria and Germany. And in Switzerland, Minergy is uh, the dominant organization. Well, even if Switzerland is putting itself up there, if you just counted sheer quantity of passive or super efficient homes, you need to scale, wouldn't it even be further ahead? Switzerland? Switzerland, Austria, Germany. Oh, yeah, well, this isn't really on a scale, but yeah, I mean, they're probably, you're, you're right, they're up here. Much further than... Yeah, but, you know, they're at the high, so we'll just leave them there. I mean, it's really just, this is just to demonstrate that, you know, they're up there, we're still down here, of course, Russia and China are pretty old, pretty uh, behind. Although they're catching up, and they, you know, give them time, they'll catch up very quickly. Back to this project, and Rudy Creasy was one of the uh, start. He was one, and with one other guy, started Minergy in Switzerland. So he's got some history with energy efficiency. And in 1990, which is if you look at this, 20 years ago, he did these houses here. And he heats a, his unit, which is actually this one right here, with a half a quart of wood. That's his entire energy load for heating and hot water for the year for the house. So he figured out in 1990 a pretty good way to go about it. 